inspired on Liberty Radio. Hello everyone. So here we are. We've arrived here at Israel and we're ready to go. We are ready to go. We're on our way to Mount Calvary and we are going to be crying out, calling upon God on behalf of all those who sacrificed their lives on the altar in this campaign. Great things, as mentioned already, are already happening. Stay tuned. God bless you all. Good evening, everyone. May God bless you abundantly and welcome to Be Inspired. As you could see, Pastor Adi and his wife have arrived in Israel already. He is carrying the requests, the lives of those who are on the altar right now. He's going to be calling upon the Lord Jesus, upon God, on Mount Calvary on that special place where God himself chose to present his sacrifice. Out of all the mountains, that was the place that Jesus was sacrificed so that today you and I could have an opportunity to restore our lives. And you can be certain that for you whose life is on the altar, you are going to experience God's power. You are going to become a living testimony. And that's exactly what I, what I want to talk to you about it today. I want to speak to you who want to ensure the year of 2023 will be a great blessing. Many people now in the beginning of the year, they make resolutions, they make plans and goals. But some people, they hope for a better life, while others, they are making sure their lives will be better. And what can I do? What can you do? to make sure that things are going to work well this year. So many people say now, this year will be better. Have you heard anyone saying, this year will be better? I wish you that this year will be better for you. Well, we have to understand something simple. For the year to be better, I have to make myself better. If you work in you, your year will be better. If I take time to make myself a better servant, my year will be better. If I work in myself to do things better before God and before people, my life will be better. So it's not only wishes, it's to do what God says the way He says. Pay attention to these words we find in Deuteronomy 28. It says here like this, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey, the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Notice so far that He's talking about obeying His voice. So first, I hear the voice of God. I am exposed to the Word of God. Then I understand what God is saying. Once I understand, I have to make a decision to accept what God says. When I accept the Word of God in the direction of God, I believe, I choose to believe, and because I believe, I obey. Look how it works. I receive the Word. I understand the Word of God in my mind. So I choose to accept the Word of God, the discipline of God. I choose to accept that what He says is for my own benefit. I accept to obey His voice. I accept to change myself. I accept to put Him first. I accept to do what He says the way He says. And because I am accepting now His Word, I will believe the way the Bible expects me to believe. And that will bring obedience. Is when a person decides to put God first. When the fear of the Lord leads the person to put Him first. At the moment that you decide to set God as the King of your life, and obey what He says, the way He says, your life will never be the same. 
Don't commit the same mistake of trying to achieve the blessings of God doing things in your way. Don't commit the previous mistake again, trying to achieve the testimonies that you hear people giving, but doing things your way. God is very clear. These benefits are for those who heard his word, understood his word, accepted his word, believed in his word. And after believing, what shows that they believe is that they choose to obey. If you obey, if you work in yourself to put God first in your life this year, do you know what's going to happen? Because you are working in yourself, to make sure that you are denying yourself and putting God first. He says here, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And on the verse 8, he says, the Lord will commend the blessing on you. <laughs> the Lord will commend the blessing on you in your storehouses, and in all which you set your hand. He is saying that he will bless your hand. Look at your hand. How many times you make a lot of efforts, but you don't see your hands prospering, growing, developing. But he is saying here that once the blessing is upon me, everything that I do will be blessed. So for the things that I do may become a blessed, blessed areas of my life, I need first to have the blessing. And I can only have this blessing when I obey his voice. That's the reason why this coming Sunday, we are going to be anointing the hands of those who are choosing. In the night video, you have made a pact with God to put him first throughout the whole year and throughout your life, including returning the first fruits. You see that the blessed hands of Paul performed unusual miracles. And the blessed hands of Bishop Macedo has revolutionized the gospel all over the world. He started alone, only with the Holy Spirit. But today, the church flourishes in more than 140 countries. And we have blessed some oil that went through his blessed hands. And this oil will be used to anoint the hands of the tithers this coming Sunday. So that the same blessings that are in the hands of Bishop Macedo, the same blessings that are promised here in the word of God may also be upon you who will not just receive an anointing, but will choose to obey what God says. When you put God first, when God is first in your life, you obey what he says. You fear him. You have a pleasure in obeying his voice. You have the desire. It pleases you to be faithful to God. It's not a burden for you. For example, you mother, is it a burden for you to provide to your children? Is it a burden? Do you feel burdened to sacrifice your own life, to give it to your children what you never had so that they may have a better life? Do you see this as a burden? No. You give your life for your children with pleasure because you love them. So those who put God first, to return your first fruits, to obey his voice, is not a burden. It's a pleasure. It's a privilege. And you who are watching me now and you say, now I am understanding why things were not going well in my life. Because I have not been faithful to God. So do you know what you can do? Repent. Repent by the fact that you have not been faithful to God. And be faithful to God, despite of who you are or what you have done. This decision to put God first will bring forth blessings upon you. When I obey, I'm showing that I believe. This Sunday, we are going to be anointing the hands of those who put God first, the hands of the first fruits. I want to show you now 
What's going to happen this week that will revolutionize your life? You who are watching us and you are searching for a way out. You've been searching for something different. You are tired of the way your life is. You have been praying. You have been attending the church. You have been a Christian. You have been a believer. Perhaps you are watching me and you are losing faith. For a long time, you don't come to the church already. You are not finding strength. What is going to happen this week is to revolutionize your life. Let's see what God is calling you to do. After having visited several countries such as Argentina, Colombia, Uruguay, Spain, and several states in Brazil, Bishop Julio Freitas has come directly from Israel to carry out his missionary trip in the United Kingdom. Have pen and paper handy to write down the following days of events, which will take place in London. On Wednesday, 4th January, Bishop Julio will be at the entrance of the auditorium at the Rainbow Theatre in Finsbury Park. He shall be anointing all those who took part in the campaign of Israel with oil blessed at Mount Calvary to determine that it is finished. On Friday, 6th January, there will be a night vigil themed, I want to serve more and better at our Kilburn branch. This meeting is open to all assistants, collaborators, PCAs, pastors and their wives, as well as all those who wish to do the work of God on the altar. This will hold from 10 p.m. to midnight at 234 Kilburn High Road, London NW6 4JR. On Sunday, 8th January, we shall have the great You Can event at our headquarters in Finsbury Park. Over 100 events like this have already been held all over the world, with a total of more than 600,000 people reached. Countless lives have been blessed and transformed through the power of faith. The service will begin at 10 a.m., but Bishop Julia will be at the entrance from 9 a.m. This will be to place a drop of the living water as consecrated on Mount Hermon in your bottle of water at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4 3NX. Don't miss out on this special missionary event. There will definitely be unforgettable moments to bless your life. See you there. Hi everyone, we are here before in front of our headquarters of the Universal Church of the King of God here in UK uh, under the care of Bishop James and I want to talk to you you are Catholic, you are uh, Evangelical, you are Jewish, you are Muslim you say, you know, I, I don't consider myself a believer I, I have been so disappointed in my faith, in my life that I, I don't believe anymore in anything. Well, I'm gonna prove to you that you are wrong by choosing not to believe. I'm gonna repeat, I'm gonna prove to you that you are wrong by choosing not to believe when it's in your power to choose to believe. Not in me, not in a church, not in a philosophy, not in a man, not in a religion, but in the living God. And you, maybe you say, but I have been praying so far. I, I have been attending to my church to my religion and I don't see any change I'm gonna show to you I'm gonna prove to you why not you are not seeing the answers you need I have here the the Bible my Bible open in the book of James so it's uh, the, the epistle of James chapter 5 verse 13 come with me because according to this passage Bishop James we see that it's not enough just to pray or to receive a prayer for somebody like a relative, a friend, a neighbor. The Bible says like this, Epistle of James, um, chapter 5, verse 13, Is anyone among you suffering? Are you suffering? What is making you to be suffering? Is it an addiction, a disease, a financial problem, a family problem, a spiritual problem? A love life problem? I don't know, but one thing I know, if you are still suffering, the answer and what you have to do to overcome this suffering is here. Let him pray. Let him pray, but pray how? And then he says, is anyone among you sick? 
let him call for the elders of the church. So you have to call the eld elders of the church. You have been receiving prayers from your relatives, from friends, from the church you have been attending. But God's word says that we have to call the elders. So the bishops, the pastors, the helpers. The reason why I'm saying this is because beyond that, calling the elders, it says, and let them pray over him, anointing him in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. <laughs> so there is three things. First, call the elders and pray for them. But this prayer should be uh, followed with the anointing. We have to anoint this person. And we have here the oil that we consecrated in Israel on mountain Hermon, on mountain um, the olive, and as well on mountain Calvary. Calvary. So we consecrate this oil, symbol of the Holy Spirit, in these three mountains. So we're going to be anointing you, the elders. I will be here at the entrance of our church on this Wednesday. And then we'll do the prayer of faith. Three things. The authority, spiritual authorities. The anointing with the oil consecrated to God. And the prayer of faith. You need this prayer of faith. Listen. You who are oppressed, depressed, addicted, you who lost your, you know, um, dreams and, and plans because of so many disappointments you have been going through. So now it's your turn this Wednesday. And you, we know, Bishop, that these things that the Bible tells us to do, they are the basis of faith. They are the foundation of faith prayer, the anointing with oil, these things are irreplaceable. You can't, you can't do this at a distance. That's why people in the past, they came to the Lord Jesus, they came to the disciples. That interaction of faith is what awakened in the person what was necessary for the miracle to happen. And we believe the same thing will happen here. So place here, please, Bishop James, this bottle of oil, because I'm ready. I am one of the elders of the church here in UK. I'm going to be anointing you here at the entrance. And when this oil reach your head, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God will reach all the areas of your life. And we will be praying very strong on your behalf, on behalf of your family. So listen, you who know someone who is addicted, who is sick, oppressed, who is unemployed, in debt, they are, you know, uh, without strength to keep fighting. They already gave up on their dreams, on their plans. So bring this person. I, I challenge you. I am challenging you right now. You who said, Bishop, Pastor, there is no solution for my problem. There is. Not only solution, but a living God who is going to make all your dreams to come true in this year, 2023. So let's take this bottle of oil to, to the altar because on Wednesday we're going to be open it and anointing. That's it, Bishop. That's our faith and we believe that this Wednesday it will be finished. The, the suffering, the problem of the person will be finished. Of this altar that symbolizes you and I thank you for being here in UK to be used by you powerfully so your name can be glorified above us all certainly people that will never have been here before they will have they will come and they will be here with us in this night that will be remembered forever and ever so I pray and I ask you send your angels when I go back to open the doors of this place, all the angels that are following me and helping me throughout the world, so let them go and reach out those who are lost in this city of London, in this country of England. And let those angels bring those people. If they are anonymous or famous, if they are poor, rich, if they are sick or healthy, if they are happy or sad, if they are dead or not, let them come 
to know you in this place we have consecrated, that we dedicated to you. And through this anointing with this oil of it is finished, it is finished. As you said, it's finished. So let comes to an end this sickness, this depression, this addiction, this poverty, this family problem, this um, uh, spiritual and, and love life problem, this curse that this person has been victim with their family for so many decades. That is what we agree here on your altar and we determine that is going to happen right now as I open the doors of your house so your angels can go after them. Amen. And now, at this very moment, the Spirit of God is touching you and calling you for this challenge. This crusade is to give you a new life. You are watching us and you have not been coming to church or you don't go to a church at all. God has seen your trouble and problems and giving you the way out right now. These meetings that we are going to have this week, right in the first full week of the year, is God bringing you here, God calling you to a place where your life will be transformed. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to just going to be watching what we are saying, agreeing with what the Word of God says, but remaining in a situation of despair, or you are going to awake, to stand up and do something about it. This coming Wednesday, we are going to have the first of these meetings. Actually, we have here a meeting, a special meeting, anointing of its finished with the oil blessed on Mount Calvary. Can you imagine? On the same place that Jesus said, it's finished, this oil. You are going to receive a special anointing one hour prior to the meeting. So from 6.30 p.m. in Finsbury Park, we are going to be anointing you and your family, your guests. And within the service, you are going to receive a direction, prayer, power, and you are not going to leave this place in the same way. On Friday, it's going to happen in Kilburn, our, our church in Kilburn. It's going to be the night vigil of serving more and better. For you assistants, you collaborators, PCAs, and you who have a desire to serve God on the altar. Actually, from this Friday, in that meeting, you who serve God, you are not going to be wearing your uniform. Assistants, pay attention. And let all the other assistants know as well. On this Friday, on the night vigil, instead of wearing your uniform, you are going to take your in uniform, you're going to organize your uniform, you're going to put in a bag, well organized, and you are going to take your uniform with you to be consecrated. Because this year, you are going to serve more and better. This year, you are going to make disciples of every nation. But everything that we do for the Lord Jesus depends on our sanctification, our consecration. So this Friday, in this night video, pay attention, get ready. You are going to prepare your uniform, well organized, and you are going to take with you in a bag. You're not going to be wearing, you're not going to be serving there on that night video. You are going to be going for yourself. It's going to, we are going to start consecrating because we know that God's going to use you greatly. And on Sunday, the big final day of these three days of this crusade, it's going to be a day that you are going to learn that you can, you can overcome the challenges, you can and you will because the word of God remains the same. Let's make a challenge. Let's see who is greater. Your problem or the promise of God. Let's see who is greater, your challenges, your problems, or what is written here. On this special Sunday, at the door, you are going to be receiving the water, the living water, a special blessed water, 
and you're going to put a bit inside of your bottle of water. I believe that you have already prepared yourself. If you haven't, prepare a bottle of water and bring with you. Because throughout this service, you are going to experience the extraordinary. It is the all of God. It's the power of God to, lead, to stand you up, to take you out of this trouble that you have. So these three days will revolutionize your life as we agreed. What is greater, the word of God or the problems that you have? Come and see. Let's challenge. You are going to learn that God is much greater and your life will become a living testimony for our God. We are going to prepare ourselves for the prayer now. If you haven't prepared your glass of water, please hold and let's pray. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. Our Lord and Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we ask you to consecrate this water. There are people in the other side connecting with us through this prayer who perhaps cannot wait until tomorrow. Who knows this person received this link from a friend and is in pain, having bad thoughts, going through a huge turmoil. We might have people watching and praying right now and at this moment, they are crying because they don't know what to do anymore. They are not finding strength anymore. And who else in this world can stretch out a hand and remove this oppression, deep sadness, pain from this person if it's not you, my God? So in the name of Jesus, Remove this agony, this humiliation and shame from this mother, this wife who doesn't even know where her husband is, this parent who don't have a clue what the children are doing in the streets right now. Remove the pain from this person who is now listening from a hospital, from a prison, Perhaps the prison of this person is their room because since they became depressed, they isolated themselves. My God, visit those who are suffering and remove the pain that nobody else could remove. Ah, my dear friend, when you drink of this water, the power of God will go into you and will set you free. So by faith, in the name of Jesus, drink the blessed water now. It's over. Be free. Lift up your face because you can. Because it's possible. Even if no one believes in you, God does. I do. We here in the Universal Church, we do. We believe in you. You are going to make it. Be free. In the name and for the glory of Jesus Christ. And you who agree, you can say, I agree. Well, my dear friend, it doesn't matter what you face or what you are facing. I am absolutely sure that God has spoken to you tonight. He's holding on to your hand. And he is calling you to come here. He is the one speaking to you right now. He wants to do great things in your life. But he needs you to react. If you can't wait until tomorrow. And you need to talk to one of us. By all means, give us a call now. The number of our helpline is now being displayed on your screen. And you can give us a call. 
There is a man of God ready to get your call. We are with you. And no one can stop you when you decide to fight back. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. The New Year's Eve night vigil was certainly a blessed night to remember. The branches from all around London came together in Finsbury Park in the expression of their faith to end the old and begin a new year in the presence of God. There were new collaborators and assistants consecrated to the work of saving souls and we also received the exciting news of a brand new help centre being established in Wolverhampton. From the powerful message of salvation to partaking of the Lord's Supper, everyone present was blessed and renewed for the new year ahead. We have determined that this new year will be different from the previous as we have surrendered our lives to God to keep going strong in this decade of strength. Have a blessed and fruitful New Year 2023.